Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker, and thank you for the opportunity to speak to Budget 2016. This being my first speech here in the House, I'd like to thank the great people of Dartmouth Coal Harbour for placing their trust in me as their representative. It is an absolute honour and one that I take extremely seriously. I thank the many folks who worked tirelessly through the long nomination campaign and, of course, the 78-day election campaign. I also just want to take a quick second, Mr. Speaker, to thank my incredible staff both here in Ottawa and home in Dartmouth Coal Harbour. But I also need to thank my amazing family, my wife Anne, Bruin, Ava, and our puppy dog Toby. We are still learning and adjusting to working in Ottawa while living in Dartmouth Coal Harbour, and it's been a challenge. I cannot thank them nearly enough for their patience, understanding, and day-to-day -day perseverance while Dad tries to fit as much as he can into his day. Next step in the learning curve, Mr. Speaker, will be scheduling some time in the gym. I was also pleased to join my friend, the member from Halifax, in welcoming the Minister of Finance when he made Halifax his first stop on his cross-country consultation for this budget. A group of Nova Scotia MPs were fortunate to join him at the, Chamber of, the Halifax Chamber of Commerce and at Dalhousie University, where at both venues, the Minister engaged with stakeholders, students, and the community. Mr. Speaker, this budget isn't just about money. This budget is about people. We are seeing a transformative plan for investments in our families, our communities, our veterans, and clean, sustainable infrastructure. Nova Scotia will be far better off than it has been in many years, thanks to Budget 2016. With this budget, Nova Scotia will see a total of $3.1 billion in major federal transfers in 2016-17. As a province, we will receive $1.7 billion through equalization, $943 million through the Canada Health Transfer, and $349 million through the Canada Social Transfer. Mr. Speaker, before becoming a Member of Parliament, I spent six years on City Council. I was well aware of how desperate our region was for a partnership with our federal government. Long stalled projects like the Burnside Expressway, they need a voice in this House, and I will be that voice. This budget delivers $32 million to Nova Scotia municipalities for public transit. Now, as my Mayor and my friend Mike Savage said about the budget, this government is very well aware of municipal needs and have been very supportive. Investing in infrastructure is good news for our economy. During the campaign, I did my best to knock on every door in my riding, and repeatedly, parents were telling me that they needed more money in their pockets, more money for kids' recreation, for hockey, baseball, soccer, for paddling on Dartmouth's amazing Lake Vinook. This budget builds on our campaign promise to strengthen the middle class. When we have a solid middle class working and contributing to our economy and to our communities, everyone benefits. We're putting money back into the pockets of middle class Canadians. We're making it so that more parents can afford to put their kids in sports and arts through the middle class tax cut and the Canada Child Benefit. And Mr. Speaker, with the Canada Child Benefit, families in Nova Scotia will receive $255 million more in child benefits between 2016 and 2018. That is a significant investment in our families. It will help to lift thousands of children in our area out of poverty, and it's tax-free. More help for those who need help more. In Dartmouth Coal Harbour, Mr. Speaker, we have numerous veterans and military families. Our veterans deserve the long-term financial stability our budget will provide. I'm proud to say that we're working to remove the red tape that makes it hard for veterans to obtain proper in-person government services. As a member of the National Defence Committee, I recently had the opportunity to question the Defence Minister about transitioning our servicemen and women to veterans how we can better care for them. The Defence Minister assured us that he's collaborating closely with the Minister of Veterans Affairs to achieve a seamless transition from service to veteran. It's about working together. And that collaboration is something that I'm seeing between our caucus and our cabinet every day. 
This budget provides Nova Scotia with over $78 million in new funding over five years for our veterans. As someone who has served as a member of the Environment Committee federally and municipally, I'm heartened to see an investment of $5 billion nationally for green infrastructure spending, for clean water and wastewater infrastructure, electric vehicle charging stations, and other clean technology. Mr. Speaker, we are also, I'm, I'm proud to say, making admission to Canada's national parks free in 2017. We have a high number of seniors who are finding it harder each year to make ends meet. Our government will follow through its pledge to roll back the age in which seniors can access their, a their OAS and GIS from 67 to 65, and we're going to boost that GIS for thousands of low-income seniors, Nova Scotian seniors, many of whom are women. Dartmouth Coal Harbour will see investments in social infrastructure funding for seniors' homes, affordable housing, and child care centres. Much needed and way overdue. I want to touch on what our government is committed for small business. Budget 2016 supports Canada's innovators and entrepreneurs. It gives them the help they need to access ex expertise, identify new markets, and scale up for future growth. Mr. Speaker, I welcome you to come to downtown Dartmouth and see how local small business entrepreneurs have revitalized our Dartmouth downtown core. If you walk down to the Alderney Market on a Saturday morning, you'll pass numerous new businesses. Bodega Boutique, Sugar Shock, 2 If By C, the Dart Gallery, New Scotland Clothing Company, and many, many more. Small businesses are the backbone of our community. And Mr. Speaker, I spent over 20 years in the family business. And when I was in business, the number one thing small business owners needed, customers with money in their pockets. This is what will drive our economy. Budget 2016 does just that for Canadians. Now, I know I've thrown a lot of figures out there, but I really want to re-emphasize the point that this budget is more about people than numbers. Budget 2016 puts people first and delivers the help that Canadians need now. It is an essential step to restore prosperity to the middle class. It reflects a new approach for the government one that offers immediate help to those who need it most and sets the course for growth for all Canadians. Mr. Speaker, like all members of this House, I'm extremely proud of my community. I'm proud of its successes, from Sidney Crosby and Nathan McKinnon to Craig Blake, who gave his life for his country. I'm proud of our amazing waterfront and our beautiful Shubenacadie Canal system and miles and miles of tra trails in Shuby Park and the Salt Marsh Trails in Coal Harbour. I couldn't be more proud of our young entrepreneurs opening shops on every corner, our festivals, our events. Mr. Speaker, I'm proud of events like the epic Canadian road race and the international SEDMA hockey tournament, the largest hockey tournament in Atlantic Canada. True Dartmouth success stories. I'm proud that our citizens named two of our, of our most recent newest harbour ferries after soldiers who died serving their country. Mr. Speaker, Budget 2016 is an ambitious, long-term plan to strengthen the heart of Canada's economy, the middle class. I thank you. Uh, questions and comments? Uh, Question comment, uh, the Honourable Member for Wellington, Halton Hills. Hey, Mr. Speaker, I um, just have a, more of a comment. In the last election, the Liberals promised to accumulate no more than $25 billion in debt over the next four years. Yet this budget completely blows that out of the water by a magnitude of 300, some 300 percent by proposing to borrow some $100 billion over the next four years. Um, can the member opposite explain such a huge discrepancy um, in light of the fact that in the last six months we haven't had a radical change in our economic outlook. Member for Dartmouth Coal Harbour. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Speaker, and I thank the Honourable Member for his question. Um, if nothing changed but the price of a, of a barrel of oil from $104 to $40, there's $15 billion in the coffers gone right there. Mr. Speaker, the member has a lot more experience than I do, and I will fully admit that I have a lot to learn. But what I learned, knocking on 22,000 doors, 
Good folks at Dartmouth Coal Harbour wanted change. They were tired of cuts. They were tired of cuts to things like CBC, cuts to social programs, and cuts to our cities. They wanted to see an investment in their people, an investment in their youth, and investment in their country, and that's what they voted for in October. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Questions and comments. The Honourable Member for Kootenay, Columbia. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and thank you to the Honourable Member for his speech. He has much to be proud of in his writing. However, I'd like to bring him back to October 13, 2015, during the election, and I'm, I'm going to quote, uh, to help close the funding gap and improve outcomes for First Nations students, we will invest new funding each year in core funding for kindergarten through grade 12 programs. This will include money committed by Stephen Harper that is yet to flow, plus an additional $300 million per year in incremental funding, totaling $750 million per year by the end of our first mandate. Over the next four years, this represents a $2.6 billion new investment in helping First Nations students learn and succeed. So how does the member reconcile the fact that his government extended the funding timeline by an extra year for First Nations to five years, resulting in an $800 million shortfall in comparison to the party's initial promise? Uh, just before we go to the Honourable Member for Dartmouth Coal Harbour, just a reminder to Honourable Members, even when another Honourable Member's name is included in a quote or a citation, uh, it's still in the realm of uh, mentioning a, a, another Honourable Member's name, and so we try to avoid that sort of thing. You can switch up the quote and substitute the Honourable Member for whatever riding and so on. The Honourable Member for Dartmouth Coal Harbour. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I, I thank the Honourable Member for his question. Um, as I said before, when I was, uh, before I was an MP, I was a, a reg regional councillor for six years. I was one vote. I had to work with people across the room. All of the folks in that room wanted the best things for their communities. They knew there was hard work to be done. There were lots of things to be done. There were lots of things to be done in this house. And we're going to work together and we're going to do these things. And we're going to make Canada a better place. Questions and comments? The Honourable Member for, pardon me, the Honourable Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Employment. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker, and I want to thank my colleague, my friend and colleague from Dartmouth Coal Harbour for his uh, speech here today, and he touched on a number of uh, uh, very important investments. I think that the, uh, the, the government, I, I share his opinion that I thought it was a tremendous budget and uh, key investments have been made in so many different areas. And, and he sells himself short. He's had a distinguished career as a, a, a councillor in the Halifax region representing the people of Dartmouth and uh, uh, I, was, I was proud of uh, the fact that the people of Dartmouth showed that, that support for him when uh, he put his name forth federally, and, and uh, I know he's going to make a great contribution to this place. Uh, beyond the numbers of the budget, what he, what he had indicated during his speech that key investments were made with veterans, uh, with municipalities, with, uh, you know, uh, pick an area, First Nations communities, all that. I believe it comes back to the fact that now Canadians have a government that are willing to engage. They're willing to talk about what the priorities are. Uh, you know, when he's out and about, when he's speaking with community groups, is he getting that sort of same sense that finally, after 10 long, dark years, they finally, there's finally a government in place that's representing the people of this country that are willing to listen to the views, to the problems, to the concerns, to the potential solutions. Thank you. Member for Dartmouth Cole Harbor. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I thank my friend for the question. What I'm hearing, and it's, it's heartwarming to, to talk to a mother from Dartmouth North or Dartmouth East who has two children who have never been in an organized sport, kids who do who are unable to do much more than shoot hoops in the local park. So, Mr. Speaker, the Canada Child Benefit is going to put money in the pockets of these families that will allow them for the first time. You can talk about tax credits, you can talk about boutique tax credits, but if you don't have the $680 to pay for novice hockey in Dartmouth, Nova Scotia today, that $90 tax credit means nothing. This child benefit will put the, po the money in the pockets of those folks who will be able to put their kids in soccer or baseball or hockey. They'll be able to spend based on the priorities of that family, and that's something that is resonating with my constituents in my riding. Thank you, yeah. Mr. Speaker. Yeah.